This week on the Weekly Pinch from Pinch News. I'm going to tell the story of how I met, dated, married, and divorced a real pathological liar. Risa Tisa captivates social media with viral 52-part series, Who the F Did I Marry? Supreme Court unanimously rules to restore Trump to 2024 presidential primary ballots. And to end the conference, uh, conversation, I'm assuming that this bill will, if we pass, will go forward and your intention is not to bring the bill that I introduced out. Is that correct? Yes, Senator Pipe, that is correct. Please, everyone, get that message out. <laughs> Chair, let's kill my bill. We're going to study it. And that way I can sleep tonight. You can sleep tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Mississippi Senate Bill 2726 is dead and will not move forward. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau caps credit card late fees at $8. I end my campaign with the same words I began it from the book of Joshua. I direct them to all Americans, but especially to so many of the women and girls out there who put their faith in our campaign. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for God will be with you wherever you go. In this campaign, I have seen our country's greatness from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, America. God bless you. A Super Tuesday for Biden and Trump, Nikki Haley drops out. Women's college basketball is continuing to change her story. Women's History Month highlights Dawn Staley. Hi, and welcome. We all know why you're here. You're here for part of the new series that I'm calling, Who the Fuck Did I Marry? The TikTok saga of Risa Tisa and her ex-husband, Legion has taken social media by storm, captivating millions with its dramatic twists and turns. Tisa's gripping 52-part series delves into the depths of her tumultuous marriage, revealing alleged deception and scams orchestrated by her former partner. As the story unfolded, Tisa's TikTok account skyrocketed to fame, amassing millions of followers and likes across her content. Despite initial attempts to conceal his identity, Social media sleuths swiftly uncovered information suggesting the real identity of Legion, even before he publicly responded to Tisa's allegations. Jerome McCoy emerged as a central figure, claiming to be the infamous Legion, and vehemently denying Tisa's accusations. McCoy's posts on social media, including TikTok, sparked further controversy, with some users questioning the authenticity of his claims. Additionally, other individuals claiming to have knowledge of Legion have surfaced, sharing their own experiences of alleged deceit and mistreatment at his hands. These accounts further corroborate Tisa's narrative, adding layers of complexity to the unfolding saga. Despite the controversy surrounding the identity of Legion, Tisa's videos have garnered widespread attention and engagement, potentially translating into significant monetary returns. Enrolled in TikTok's creativity program Beta, Tisa stands to earn substantial income from her viral content, with estimates ranging from thousands to tens of thousands of dollars per post. The Supreme Court issued a significant ruling on Monday, delivering a decisive victory to former President Donald Trump in a case with profound implications for the upcoming 2024 election. The court unanimously reversed a decision by the Colorado Supreme Court which had concluded that Trump could not appear on the ballot in the state due to his actions leading up to the January 6 attack on the Capitol. The Colorado court had invoked Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which bars individuals who have engaged in insurrection from holding office. However, the Supreme Court ruled that it is Congress, not individual states, that has the authority to enforce this provision against federal office seekers. This decision applies nationwide emphasizing the importance of a uniform approach to determining candidate eligibility for federal office. While the ruling avoids making a determination on whether Trump's actions constituted an insurrection, it effectively ensures his presence on the ballot in Colorado and puts an end to similar cases that have arisen in other states. Trump celebrated the decision on social media, declaring it a big win for America. Despite disappointment from some state officials, such as Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold, who expressed concern about Congress's ability to act. Others, 
like Maine Secretary of State Shenna Bellows, promptly acted in accordance with the ruling to comply with the law. The Supreme Court's decision removes one avenue for holding Trump accountable for his role in challenging the 2020 election results. However, it also highlights the complexities and potential chaos that could arise from allowing individual states to determine candidate eligibility for federal office. Although the court's decision was unanimous, there were differing opinions among the justices, with some liberals expressing concern about potential future implications. Nevertheless, the ruling underscores the importance of a consistent and impartial approach to election law. The case raised novel legal questions about the application of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, particularly regarding presidential candidates and the determination of insurrection. Trump and his allies argued against his disqualification, asserting that January 6 did not constitute an insurrection and that the amendment's provisions should not apply to candidates for president. A bill aimed at closing three public universities in Mississippi will not move forward, bringing an end to a week-long controversy that some lawmakers attribute to misleading news coverage. However, another bill advancing in the Senate Universities and Colleges Committee has raised concerns about its potential impact, despite assurances from its sponsor. The sponsor of Senate Bill 2726, Senator John Polk, Republican Hattiesburg, expressed relief that his bill had officially been killed. The proposed legislation would have required the governing board of Mississippi's public universities to close three institutions by 2028 after analyzing various criteria. However, Committee Chair Nicole Boyd, Republican Oxford, clarified that SB 2725, her own bill, would mandate a similar analysis but with a different intent. SB 2725 proposes the creation of a task force to review factors affecting Mississippi's universities, particularly in light of an anticipated decline in high school graduates attending college. The task force would assess enrollment trends, funding formulas, infrastructure needs, and graduation rates to make recommendations aimed at increasing efficiency and the number of college graduates in the state. During the committee meeting, Senator Solly Norwood, Democrat Jackson, inquired whether the task force would address infrastructure deficiencies, especially at historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs. Boyd indicated that while all universities face infrastructure challenges, the task force's recommendations are not predetermined. Boyd emphasized that her intention with the bill is not to consider university closures but to ensure that taxpayer dollars effectively meet institutional needs. She stressed the importance of making the institutions of higher learning, IHL, system efficient and effective in preparing a strong Mississippi workforce. Notably, Polk's bill faced significant opposition with thousands signing an online petition against it and local media publishing critical op-eds. Alumni from HBCUs voiced concerns about fairness in decision-making, given the composition of the IHL board. After confirming that Polk's bill would not proceed, Boyd apologized to him for what she termed misinformation surrounding the legislation. She highlighted discrepancies between the bill's content and how it was portrayed in news coverage, suggesting a need to address literacy issues to prevent such misunderstandings in the future. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB, has finalized a rule aimed at reducing excessive credit card late fees by closing a loophole used by large card issuers. The rule will save American families over $10 billion annually by lowering the typical late fee from $32 to $8, benefiting more than 45 million people. This action comes after concerns that credit card companies were profiting from penalties and fees, despite the Credit Card Accountability Responsibility and Disclosure Act of 2009, Card Act, intended to curb such practices. The CFPB's rule lowers the immunity provision threshold for late fees to $8 and ends automatic inflation adjustments for larger card issuers with over 1 million open accounts. The rule also requires issuers to justify higher fees above the threshold based on actual collection costs. By addressing the problem of excessive late fees, the CFPB aims to promote fairer practices in the credit card market and provide consumers with greater financial protection. It is now up to Donald Trump to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond it who did not support him. And I hope he does that. At its best, politics is about bringing people into your cause, not turning them away. And our conservative cause 
badly needs more people. This is now his time for choosing. With a slew of predictable results, Super Tuesday saw big wins for Joe Biden and Donald Trump. It is now beyond reasonable dispute that Biden and Trump are the overwhelming favorites to face each other in November. However, there were a few surprises as the results were announced, with a few warning signs for both campaigns. Biden, who hasn't faced any significant challengers, won his primaries with huge margins. The only possible sign of trouble for him was the 20 percent of Democrats voting uncommitted in Minnesota. The uncommitted vote also topped the mark in counties around Minneapolis. 12 percent of North Carolina Democratic voters opted for no preference. It became apparent on the night that there is a widespread call for change in President Biden's policies, particularly on his stance in the ongoing Israel-Hamas war. Pro-Palestinian groups are targeting next week's primary in Washington state, which has a sizable left-wing activist population. Biden was also handed his first primary defeat in the U.S. territory of American Samoa. Donald Trump posted dominant wins in primaries across the country, a 70 percent margin in Alabama, 61 percent in Texas, and over 75 percent of the vote in California. Despite these big wins, there were indications of dissatisfaction with Trump with some Republican voters. Nikki Haley continued to do well with young Republicans in suburban areas and with college-educated voters. Forty percent of Republican primary voters in Virginia and 32 percent in North Carolina said they would not vote for Trump if he was convicted of a crime. Nikki Haley's only win of the night came in Vermont. On Wednesday morning, Haley announced that she was dropping out of the race, leaving Donald Trump as the presumptive GOP nominee. The former U.N. ambassador congratulated Trump on his wins, but did not endorse the former president. Women's History Month is starting off strong in the world of women's sports. Iowa Hawkeyes sensation Caitlin Clark, guard for Iowa, kicked off Women's History Month by breaking the overall NCAA D1 scoring record that had been held for over 45 years. The previous record was held by Pete Maravich, a.k.a. Pistol Pete, who held the scoring record of 3,667 career points since 1970. Clark broke it with two free throws and less than five seconds left on the clock earlier this week. She also declared for the WNBA draft ahead of Senior Day and her breaking the record. Clark is projected to be the first overall draft pick for this year's 2024 WNBA draft. On the same day of Clark having an historic game, Hall of Famer Dawn Staley led her South Carolina Gamecocks to another undefeated basketball season. This being her second consecutive undefeated season. What was so special about Coach Staley and the Gamecocks win was that Staley lost all five of her starters last season, including the current WNBA Rookie of the Year, Aliya Boston. Ahead of this season, Season, several media outlets shared their thoughts that Staley wouldn't be able to do it again, nor even be a competitor this season. And she proved them all wrong by currently being the only undefeated basketball team, men's or women's, in the nation. Angel Reese, who made her story as the Bayou Barbie powerhouse last basketball season, was honored as the SEC Women's Basketball Player of the Year this week. Reese had gone viral for doing the You Can't See Me, John Cena hand gesture Caitlin Clark's way last year in the Final Four championship game. Reese and LSU also won that game last year and is the current national championship holder. The Bayou Barbie has been through a lot on and off the court, including publicly as she wasn't with the team for a couple games earlier in the season to now winning one of the hardest titles to achieve in college basketball. Last year, the conclusion of the Women's March Madness Basketball Tournament Final Four secured over 9.9 million viewers that included all three women mentioned above. Women's History Month is off to an incredible start as we head into March Madness and hopefully make her story again during this year's tournament. University of South Carolina women's basketball coach Dawn Staley has been making history for decades and continues to stamp history in sports. March 1st began the start of Women's History Month, a month that is dedicated to highlighting the history of women's contributions to American history. Sunday, March 3rd, Staley made history again with her second consecutive undefeated season as South Carolina's head women's basketball coach. Her team is also currently the only undefeated team in the nation for men's or women's basketball. 
Staley's success and mark in history didn't start as a coach, but back when she was the starting guard for the University of Virginia, where she led her team to three Final Fours and one national championship game. Her number 24 is now retired at the university. Staley, a three-time gold medal recipient while playing, has had much success as a coach also. She has won the Naismith Coach of the Year three-time, a seven-time SEC tournament champion, and also has coached her team to two NCAA women's basketball championships. Last season in 2023, Staley lost her starting five players and had to adjust a new starting five players this season. Many outlets called out that the South Carolina Gamecocks wouldn't even come close to the undefeated season they had for the 2022-2023 year, being that the Gamecocks went undefeated and their first loss was in the 2023 Final Four tournament. This 2023-2024 season, Staley and her Gamecocks remained number one in overall women's basketball rankings week over week, despite the doubts she could go undefeated again. It was also announced this week that Staley was named the 2024 SEC Coach of the Year for the third consecutive season, but overall her fifth naming of Cody. Don Staley and the Gamecocks women's basketball team are looking to potentially have a perfect season if they are able to remain undefeated and win the national championship. Staley is a staple in not only women's sports history, but overall women's history. That wraps up all of the news from the Weekly Pinch. Tune in next week for more. In the meantime, Visit us online at www.pinchnews.com.